Jeremiah 32, starting with verse 6. We know that the book of Jeremiah was written because Jeremiah was giving them a warning about what would take place when the king of Babylon, their enemy, would come in and take them captive, people of Judah, into captivity into the land of Babylon, and how they would besiege Jerusalem. And how they would claim Jerusalem as their own. And Jeremiah told them that they should not fight the king, Nebuchadnezzar, but they were supposed to submit to the armies of Nebuchadnezzar. They were supposed to surrender to the armies of Nebuchadnezzar. But I want you to notice what happens here in Jeremiah 32, beginning with verse 6. It says, And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hananiel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anatol, for the right of the redemption, the right of redemption is thine to buy. In other words, this land is in the family. So the right of redemption is thine. This is what he's saying here. He wanted to keep it in the family. It says here in verse 8, it says, So Hananiah, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said to me, Buy my field, I pray thee, that is in Anatol, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord, verse 8. And I bought the field of Hanadiel, my uncle's son that was in Anatol, and weighed him the money, even 17 shekels of silver. And I subscribed the evidence, and sealed it, and took witnesses, and weighed him the money in the balance. So I took the evidence of the purchase, both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. And then he says here down in verse 12, it says, And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch, that's his secretary, the son of Neriah, the son of Maaseah, in the sight of Hananiel, my uncle's son. And in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase, before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. So his uncle's son said, I want you to buy that field. Because the right of inheritance is thine. But the problem with this is, is that the land is now going over to the enemy. And Jeremiah even said the land is now is going to go into the hands of the enemy. But yet he's saying that God's word is telling him to go and buy the field. Invest in the field. Invest in the land. Keep it in the family. Even, even, even all of this, in spite of the fact that the land is going back, the land is going to the hands of the enemy, the king of Babylon. Some would say it is presumptuous. But Jeremiah is simply acting out that which ultimately is going to be fulfilled. The land is getting away from the family. The land is going to be lost. But what God is letting them know is that he is invested in this land and is going to be brought back unto them in the end. Can you imagine the mothers of those girls for 10 years? Thinking that their children are possibly dead and longing to see them brought back into captivity, brought out of captivity and into freedom within the confines of their own home. Well, the Lord also has told us that we have an enemy as well. And he has taken over the land. He's taken over the field. And Jesus has invested in this planet called Earth. Even though Satan's wickedness is going to continue to increase, 
even though it appears to be hopeless, because Christ has invested in it, he is ultimately going to bring it back unto himself. It's said here that the writing, the contract that was laid up, that it was sealed, there were witnesses, and it was sealed. Reminds me of what I read in Revelation chapter 7, where it says that we are sealed with the seal of the living God. Satan claims us as his. But because Christ has invested in us, he's able to, in the end, to seal us with the seal of the living God. I remember reading in 2 Timothy 2.19, where it said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Listen to this particular description of these events out of the volume, Prophets and Kings. Prophets and Kings. It says here, this is PK 469. He had been prophesying a long period of captivity in faraway Babylon. Already advanced in years, he could never hope to receive personal benefit from the purchase he had made. However, his study of the prophecies that were recorded in the scriptures had created within his heart a firm conviction that the Lord purposed to restore the children of, ca of the captivity their ancient possession of the land of promise. With the eye of faith, Jeremiah saw the exiles returning at the end of the years of affliction and reoccupying the land of their fathers. Through the purchase of the Anakoth estate, he would do what he could to inspire others with the hope that brought so much comfort to his own heart. The Bible calls, talks about the blessed hope in Titus chapter 2, verse 11. The blessed hope of the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what it tells us here further. It says, having signed the deed to transfer and secure the counter signatures of witnesses, Jeremiah charged Baruch's secretary, take these evidences. This evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed, and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, that they may continue many days. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. This is Jeremiah 32, 14 and 15. So discouraging was the outlook for Judah at the time of this extraordinary transaction that immediately after perfecting the details of the purchase and arranging for the preservation of the written records, the faith of Jeremiah, unshaken though it had been, was now sorely tried. Had he, in his endeavor to encourage Judah, acted presumptuously? That's the question. Had he, in his endeavor to encourage Judah, acted presumptuously? In his desire to establish confidence in the promises of God's word, had he given grounds for false hope? Those who had entered into covenant relations with God had long since gone the provision made in their behalf. Could the promises to the chosen nation ever be ever meet with complete fulfillment? It was hopeless. Or at least it appeared to be hopeless. Would it ever meet with its fulfillment was the question that was being asked. So God told them even beforehand. Because he knew it would appear to be hopeless. He told Jeremiah through his uncle's son, go and buy that field, invest in that field. And that investment was the investment of hope and knowing that all that has been lost is going to be restored back unto you again. Yes, it's going to look hopeless.